In this video, we will see how to use IP address resources in pod and container blueprints. We will also take a look at a sample pod and container to understand the usage. At a high level, there are four types of schemas available that can be used in pod and container blueprints. To begin with, an address pool represents pool of IP addresses. Pod level address pools take values during the pod creation. Container level address pools are derived from an address range blueprint or an address space blueprint defined in the container blueprint. Address blueprint is one type using which a specific IP address can be acquired, which can be used either for provisioning use cases or for infrastructure management. For an example, gateway is one type where one would want to acquire a specific IP address to indicate what is the gateway for a given network. Here we have a sample pod and container blueprint. In this example, I have two address pool blueprints defined. The first one is for the management network called management IP pool. And the second one is for the NAT use cases named as NAT pool. An address pool in the pod blueprint could have two different flags to indicate whether it's a public or private pool and whether the pool can be shared. A private pool will result in getting your own copy of the pool from the IPAM system for a given pod. The shareable flag will indicate whether the pool can be shared across multiple pods. And if a pool is shared, each pod that shares the same pool will share the same copy from the IPAM system. The next type of blueprint that is associated with IP addresses is the address range blueprint. In this example, I have a I have an address range defined named as customer range, which is used for the customer network. Address range blueprint takes a range mask and a pool mask, and also the public flag to indicate whether the pools created out of this address range are going to be private pools or public pools. Now we will take a look at the container blueprint to understand how address pools are used. Address pools at the container blueprint can be derived either from an address space or an address range. In this example, I have a customer IP pool 1 which is derived from a customer space blueprint. The address space blueprint by default has a default network address and the network mask. These values can be overridden at runtime when the container is created. There's a second IP address pool that is defined here, which is customer IP pool 2, which is derived from the customer range, which is defined in the pod blueprint. You may notice that this address blueprint also has a NAT pool associated, which is also defined in the pod blueprint. The next type of schema available around IP address resources is the address blueprint schema. In this example, I have a address blueprint defined to indicate how the gateway for my customer IP pool 1 should be derived. I have indicated the pool position as 1, meaning that the first available IP address will be used as the gateway for my customer IP pool 1. Now we will take a look at a pod that was created from the pod and container blueprint that we just looked at. Here I have a sample pod where I have the management IP pool defined. During the pod creation time, I have defined the values for my management IP pool and for the NAT pool. As part of data use cases, if I need to add more capacity to my existing IP pool, I could do that by adding additional values onto the existing management IP pool here. If I need to create a new address pool, I may also do that by clicking on the add address pool button here and specifying a unique name and the values as needed. We also have an address range defined here. You may notice that the IPAM ID for the address range blueprint is not available here. This is because the IPAM ID will be available at the container when the container is created. This is usually done in first come first serve basis. Now we will take a look at the container to see how the address pools out of the address range are derived. 
Here we have container 1 that was created from the sample pod that we just looked at. It has two address pools defined here. Customer IP pool 1 is derived from the customer space blueprint and the customer IP pool 2 is derived from the range blueprint that was defined in the pod. You may notice that for the customer IP pool 2, there is an IPAM ID available now. And the customer IP pool 1 is derived from the space. You may notice that the values that we are seeing here is not the same as the one that we saw in the original container blueprint. This is because the values have been overridden at runtime. The next one that we will discuss is the gateway. We had an address blueprint defined in the container blueprint to define the gateway. And you may notice that the gateway has been acquired for the customer IP pool 1 with the pool position 1 here. Now we will take a look at the IPAM system to see how the address pools are reserved based on the values that we have defined in the pod and container blueprint. The first pool that we are looking at here is for the management network, which is the management IP pool. And you may notice that for the range blueprint, I have mentioned slash 24 as my range mask and slash 28 as my pool mask. And you may notice that the IPAM system has created multiple pools out of the range based on the values. And we also have the next pool, which is associated with the address space blueprint and also the NAT pool that we defined in the pod blueprint. For more details on the various schemas that we just looked at, please take a look at our online documentation. Thank you for watching.